Now that we've spent a great deal of time discussing the options files, we want to move on to some other things you can do with the main client. Again, the main client is MySQL. This client functions in two modes, so let's mention that. MySQL client functions in two modes. One, interactive. Two, batch. In interactive mode, you can execute commands against the server and have it return values to the screen and continue to do so in an asynchronous fashion. The way we've been operating thus far is in interactive mode. Again, when you connect using MySQL and specifying the user who you'd like to connect to the DB as, followed by the prompt for a password, you are considered to be in interactive mode. This is interactive mode because we can execute commands such as show databases and asynchronously the server responds after we've executed a command. If we quit, return to the shell, and instead of actually logging in in interactive mode using the E option and then specifying our SQL command in between single quotes, we're running a process pretty much in batch mode. Let's run the same query, show databases, and you'll see that it returns all without actually entering the terminal mode. This is considered batch mode. We can submit multiple commands separated by semicolons and ensure that we will be successful in a scripted environment because the client supports two modes, interactive and batch. In interactive, you are in terminal monitor mode. Batch mode submits commands, results are sent to standard out. So batch modes, commands are submitted, results are sent to standard out, which is basically the screen, the console. So we know that there are two modes. We also know about the options files, the order in which they are processed, including global, home directory, and command line. But we have yet to look at some of the commands that we can specify on the command line. For example, we have enabled the compression option in the global file. So this, the global file indicates, if we cat it, that whenever a user connects using one of the clients, if compression is supported, it should be true. Let's disable it. We'll modify etc my.cnf and we'll set compression set to false. Remember we did say that the command line option overrides any of the previously defined options in any of the files, global or home based, which means the user's home directory. So now compression is set to false. Let's cat it again, which means we have the ability or opportunity here to override on the command line. Let's execute MySQL with the help option. Now we could pipe the output using grep just to extract anything related to compression so that we're not inundated with all the other options and in order to turn on compression we can do it in many ways we can use dash uppercase C two leading dashes compress or last but not least dash dash compress equals false so there are three ways we can run it short option long option and variable option so let's just list that note most MySQL options can be specified in one of three ways, or we should say in up to three ways. One short option, for example, I'll we'll just mention dash C for compression. Two, long option, and in this case it would be compress, same result, and three, variable option. For example, compress equal true, for example. So these are the three ways you can execute options. So how would we turn on compression? Well, first let's just ensure that compression will be denied or disabled because we've dis we've actually 
specified false in the global file, but the default is false anyway. So even if we turned it off in the global file, the default is false. MySQL help and then we grep compress and you'll see that compress is set to false. This is from the variable section. If we ran it long way, MySQL help and simply navigated, you'll see compress is set to false. The grep just returned the lines where compression turns up. Which means if we attempt to connect to the server as root and be prompted for a password, when we execute a show status, you'll see that compression is indeed turned off. Let's scroll up and there it is. Compression is off. So we can specify options, of course, on the command line. But you don't need to memorize the options. MySQL help pipe the output to less and you'll see in the very first section the more common options such as running in batch mode, defining certain character sets, turning on or off compression, but if you want to turn it off or on the best way to do it is through the variable option using dash dash compress equals true or false or by defining the option in one of the options files either global or home. We can specify a default database either using uppercase D as a first short option, dash dash database equals name as a variable option, we could also specify a delimiter that's to be used and we can run commands as we've been doing which runs in batch mode. Execute certain commands, return the output to the screen. We can force even if we get an error because usually once an error is returned after having run a command MySQL will cease processing subsequent statements. And some other key items include whether or not you want the beeps to be turned on or off can be annoying when you're navigating through the terminal interface you can turn it off with the dash b option or you can specify no dash beep in the configuration files one of the configuration files host this is an important option we've been using mysql supports the ability to output results query results in other formats besides tab separated ASCII text. It also supports HTML and XML, which we'll look at right now. Let's say we want to output to HTML. We'll copy dash H and run a query. MySQL user root password ABC123 and we'll execute. We want to turn on the H option, of course. We'll execute in a batch mode select user comma host comma password from mysql.user. This will run the query against the MySQL table. But again, the MySQL database is the default, so we could drop MySQL here and simply run the query and watch the output be dumped to the screen. There it is. This is HTML output. Now since MySQL clients, including MySQL, as well as MySQL admin and the others, support output redirection as do standard Linux and Unix utilities, this means that we could send the output into a text file or into a file using output redirection. So after we run the command, simply include a, an output redirection symbol, which is the greater than symbol, followed by a, a file name. We'll call the file name mysql.html. We'll echo the exit status. You'll see it's successful, which now means we have a file called mysql.html, which we can use the web browser to open. So let's use Firefox to briefly open this file just to see what it looks like in the browser. We'll go to File, Open File, in our home directory and this is home for Linux CBT so we should move this file let's move mysql.html into Linux CBT's home directory because we have a root shell there let's go back into home and there it is mysql.html so there are the results simple table each column represents one field that we selected so if we selected 10 fields 10 columns would be returned and 10 HTML columns would be returned as a result very simple but it's in HTML additionally we can output to XML which is another common format using the X option so let's rerun that command and this time we'll send the output to Linux CBT's home directory using the tilde output redirection followed by Linux CBT followed by mysql.xml for example and instead of dash uppercase H let's go with dash uppercase X for XML the file has been created and in the browser we'll go to file open not open location but open file open location takes us to the address bar there's the XML file 
Now the outputs return in a structured fashion. Result set being the, the outermost container, row being the next level down, and then the various field names, and in between the field name descriptor is the actual name of the field, and subsequent to that you have the values such as root, localhost, and the encrypted password. This is an XML parsable document. It says no style sheet is, or sorry, no style is associated, but that's okay. It isn't required. We just want to illustrate that it is possible to use the client to output to XML as well. So we know about compression, HTML output, XML output running in batch modes using the dash E option, so we don't need to enter the terminal option. By the way, the batch mode is very important because, again, from a scripted perspective, you may want to have a script, a Perl script, for example, or a PHP script connect to MySQL, check the database for certain results, and have the results placed into a file for subsequent usage. Now, how do we output? the same information unformatted or not HTML or XML formatted. We can run the same query but without using output redirection and without any XML or HTML specifiers just output to the screen. We're going to select user host password from user. That's it. There's the output. However, notice that this output contains column headers including user, host, and password followed by the actual values. No differently than the HTML file we just opened or the XML file. Oftentimes when using MySQL to query a table for specific information or multiple tables using joins, you will want to output the information so that it can be imported by some other program, perhaps a program that, op that operates on tab separated files, or a program such as a spreadsheet. Well, when you do so, you don't necessarily want the column headers. Sometimes you do, most times you don't. So you could optionally specify that the column headers are to be skipped using the skip column names feature. Another thing you should know is that what you see here, the pluses and minuses, which, are, which function as the borders for the different fields and rows, will not appear in the output even if you don't have skip column names turned on. Let's show you that. Let's run this query and we'll dump it to a file called user table dot text. Then let's cat user underscore table dot text and notice that the output is tab separated. It doesn't contain the plus or minus borders. So this is ready to be imported into some program. But the only problem here that may trip up some programs is the fact that the very first row contains the column headers, which you may or may not want. Well, with the MySQL client, simply rerun the, the command, but this time specify skip column names and then the output will skip the column names. Let's cat that file again and you'll see now it no longer contains the column names. We don't have to use output redirection. We could dump the output to the screen if we don't intend to save it and there you have it. No column headers this time but the plus and minuses are simply there for aesthetics. They're never going to appear in the output and when we cat the output file you see that it doesn't exist just a tab separated set of values which can be easily imported into your program of choice for processing so MySQL supports skip column names now let's run MySQL help and grep column you'll see there are a few options but the option that you see here column dash name set to true is a default this may be an option that you want to disable on a per user or on a global basis, depending on how the system's used. If you want this option to apply to the currently logged in user, then modify the currently logged in user's my.cnf my file. So for example, let's pico my.cnf, not history file. And in here, we'll need to create a section. Let's create a MySQL section and we'll paste the option column names equals false. Then before actually running the query, let's run MySQL help grep column and now you see that column names has been turned to false from true. In other words, the personal file has been processed. This option again can be copied to the global file and it would work as well. So now we can rerun our MySQL query without the skip column names long option and know that the output will be sent without column headers. So very simple styles that can be applied. Another thing that can be done is 
we can remove the aesthetics of the plus and minus borders by using the silent option, which of, of course can be specified in a personal my.cnf or in a global file. In order to do so, simply specify the S option, which means silent, and then watch the plus and minus borders disappear. But it doesn't impact the file when output redirection is used anyway, so you may or may not want it. Aesthetically, you typically want the plus and minus signs for the queries that are run to stand it out so that you can see easily or delineate between the rows and the various columns. And additionally, as we've mentioned, variable names can be defined on the command line. When you execute MySQL help, towards the end you see a whole list of variables that can be run. These variables can be defined on the command line. A common variable is the local in-file option, which is turned off by default. This allows us to upload files to the database for import reasons. But there is a new utility, MySQL import, which serves the purpose of importing files much better than using the main MySQL client. But if you wanted to set this on a command line, simply, as we mentioned, use the leading dash dashes, so dash dash local in file, and we want to set, this actually sent an enter to the command line which was inadvertent, we want to set local in file equal to true, and the option will be turned on. But we don't need all of these other options, we just want to set it to true, and then when executed with the proper options, well, we didn't specify anything. Let's say we ran with the show status. Let's use root password abc123 e show status, for example, which will turn the output back to standard out. And then if we look for the local in file option, let's search for that option. And you'll see that the in file is actually set to true. This is on the show status. Super. So that's set. MySQL is very useful and just simply run MySQL help to see the different variables that can be defined either on the command line or elsewhere. Another thing we can override is the database. But the easiest way to override a database is to simply log into the database using the last option on the command line such as temp db. So this will allow us to log in but switch our databases to temp db overriding what was defined globally MySQL of course. So that's a little bit about using the MySQL client. We're going to move on to the other clients next.